Well, many of us are still at home because of the coronavirus, but many people have also found that they've had the time to explore the outdoors. And two people who are very happy about that I'll be talking with today, and that is our very good friend, Porcupine Pat. He is the education coordinator and now the interim district manager of the Schuylkill Conservation District, and will soon be joined too by his good friend, Kyle Shutt. Kyle is an insect management technician at the Schuylkill Conservation District. So Porcupine Pat, this has been, I guess, a time for people to, uh, you know, find their love of the outdoors before everybody was running around and schedules, you know, of kids doing things and parents doing things. But when things had to calm down because of the virus, they had a chance to find their love of the outdoors again. And do you think that's happened? Oh, absolutely, Lisa. You could just see it everywhere, you know, no matter which way. There are people walking on sidewalks, walking their dogs, walking with their children, families walking together. And I have to say that the conservation district has uh, an obligation to provide opportunities. And one is Sweet Arrow Lake County Park over near Pine Grove. And it has been well received this past spring during these pandemic times. You also told me that recently it was National Pollinator Week. So I know that that's passed, but the effort continues. So tell us about what Pollinator Week is all about, and why it's important for our viewers. First off, a question you have to ask is, do you like to eat? And if you do, then you can thank a pollinator because the, what they say is one out of every three bites of food that you eat, you can thank a pollinator. Now, a lot of people will think honeybees. Well, that's, that's an important pollinator, but there are others. And there's other types of bees. There's wasps, there's flies, there's, believe it or not, beetles are very important pollinators. And in fact, more so than bees. So a lot of people uh, have become aware of the fact that uh, we need to promote pollinators in order to help our food supply and food security, especially during these pandemic times. There's boxes of seed that you could even get from you know, like your home supply stores, you know, you know, everything from Lowe's to Home Depot to, believe it or not, you can go to the dollar stores. And uh, I, have, I personally, uh, I, I buy these boxes that say pollinator mix, or there you can get these little packets, it says pollinator mix. And there's a whole slew of different types of flowers that promote pollinators. Everything from cone flower to you know the different types of mints. Uh, it's astounding the diversity there. But keeping in mind that a lot of people have uh, gardens now because they have the time now. And there's there's always something to be said for growing your own vegetables somehow. And especially if you have a family you have a young person that's helping you weed or plant the seeds, there's something miraculous watching those seeds emerge as a plant and then you reap the benefits from that plant. Well, now we have Kyle in the chair to tell us about some of the insects and problems that we'll be dealing with and how we can handle that. Kyle, nice to talk with you. I know that uh, mosquitoes, ticks, always a concern this time of the year. And are they out in full force right now? Yeah, pretty much everything that wants to bite um, is out in full force right now. I know this weather um, has them going and, you know, with everybody either being off work or having more free time, um, I know a lot more people are getting outdoors and trying to enjoy that. So it's important for them to remember that these uh, biters are also out there and to keep an eye out for those guys. Is there anything you recommend that we can do to maybe deter them from coming around? Um, if you're out for a hike, I mean, definitely stay on the main trails. Um, try to avoid that brushy habitat. That's where the ticks are going to be. Um, make sure you use your bug spray before you go out. And if it's a day that you can get by with wearing long pants or long sleeve shirt, um, that's going to help, you know, reduce getting bites from mosquitoes. And if you wear light colored clothing, you might be able to see a tick crawling on your clothes um, before it gets a chance to attach. Is this a really bad year for both of those? We're starting to see an uptick. I mean, their levels fluctuate a little bit, especially with the mosquitoes, depending on the type of weather we get. Um, you know, they can take cover a little bit more. Um, and right now with the heat that we're getting, 
Um, I know we're starting to get those afternoon showers coming through pretty regularly. So that makes good good habitat for the mosquitoes and the ticks. I know another subject you wanted to touch on is the lantern fly. Um, where are we at with that? Um, so right now we're pretty much in the middle of their season. Um, I've seen them hatching out probably the first week of June. Um, so they've had about a month to start growing now. So they're at about the third stage of their life cycle. Um, over the next week, maybe two weeks, we'll start seeing them transition to getting a little bit of color, um, red color on their back. And then I would say, you know, two, three weeks from now, we might start to see um, the first adults emerging, especially um, in the southern portion of the county, maybe even down towards Berks. And then that'll just continue progressing um, as we get later into the summer. And what should we do if we see it around our own home so we don't want them to spread? Um, you can do some at-home treatments. Um, Penn State Extension has a lot of good information on their website um, about safe ways that you can get rid of them in your own backyard, whether it's using um, sprays that you can get at your local home and garden store. Um, there is a new type of circle trap um, that's out that collects the adult lanternflies um, and actually catches them in a netting and in a bag so you don't have to use any, any sprays. Um, and you can also try the sticky bands, but we um, see those become less effective as the adults emerge because the adults are a little bit stronger. Um, so the bands work better, typically the end of May and early June with the smaller instars. Well, hopefully our viewers learned a lot today in regards to attracting the good insects and then also deterring the bad insects and uh, hoping to make this a better place so that we can get out and enjoy this beautiful weather. Thank you guys for joining me today. I appreciate it.